So the surgery is performed under a general anaesthetic. Patient uh, has a small cut about 15 centimeters in the front of the ankle. Um, the damaged joint surface is then removed. Now I use a latest technique called prophecy, which is uh, patient specific instrumentation. And this means that it's tailored to fit the unique anatomy of the patient. Uh, the new joint's made of two metal components that go into the shin bone, the end of the tibia, and to the ankle bone, which we call the talus. Um, and then a plastic liner goes in between the two metal components that allows gliding motion and movement. The skin is then closed over the top with stitches and a dressing is applied, and the whole procedure takes about 90 minutes. So ankle replacement is a treatment to replace worn out ankle joint, uh, which we call ankle arthritis. Um, and the joint's usually worn out because the person has had a nasty break of the ankle or severe sprains of the ankle over the years. Now, in some cases, it's because the body attacks itself in an autoimmune condition called rheumatoid arthritis. And the good news is that most patients respond to non-surgical treatments such as activity modification and physiotherapy, ankle splints or supports, weight loss and painkillers. But when those treatments have been tried and failed and they're no longer working, then surgery should be considered. Well, because ankle replacement is a mechanical structure just like a car, it doesn't last forever and the published failure rate is about 1.5% per year, which means that each year 1.5% will fail. So after 10 years, one, it's reasonable to expect that about 15% of patients will need to have their ankle redone. Another way of looking at it, of course, is that 85% of patients will still have their ankle in place after 10 years. Okay, so look, all operation carries risks. Um, there are risks of the general anaesthetic, although nowadays anaesthetics are very safe. Um, there's also the risk of pre-existing medical conditions getting worse. The main risks to a joint replacement are infection, nerve injury, and further surgery. Now, what minor wound infection is not uncommon, requiring perhaps some antibiotics to treat it, and that may occur in one in 10 patients. And that's mainly in the ankle because the blood supply to the front of the ankle isn't great. Um, deeper infection requiring removal of the implants because it's failed is much, much rarer and occurs about one in a hundred cases. Nerve injury can occur especially if there's lots of scar tissue around the ankle, for example, after a, a broken ankle or, 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 or repeated sprains. And the risk of that injury is about one in 25. But nowadays, um, if it's identified early, there's a lot we can do about it. And the risk, obviously, of the ankle needing to be removed and replaced is about 1.5% per year, as I said before. And it's easy to be put off if you ex understand these risks, but everything in life carries risk. And just to put it into context, if you walk along the street, the risk of being run over by a car is 1 in 100 or so. So uh, I think that just puts it into uh, frames the, the, the issue. So most patients um, after an ankle replacement can return to most of their activities they could do before, such as long walks, hiking, golf, swimming, cycling, without any problem whatsoever. Certain sports, such as contact sports, perhaps running, squash, soccer, are not sensible, because even if you can do them, then A, they risk injury, and B, they risk earlier failure of the implant than is necessary.